name is Holly Lee. I own a coaching business called hollylee.co. I know I'm a very fancy woman with fancy word. I'm here to answer all of your questions, every single one of them. Oops, and before I forget, um, if you're new, download right here. This is the best and most innovative thing that I've ever done. I saw one of your questions about the type of star template and questions. You really don't want to miss this. There's no catch. All you have to do is follow the link. The URL is right there. Download it. I need your email address. So once you put in your email address, it's a PDF that you can get a copy of what you're seeing right now. Read it word by word. And I highly encourage you guys to follow the format. This is exactly what I teach in my VIP coaching course. Okay. That example right there will hit the leadership principle 100% of the time, including frugality and earn trust. So let's go straight to some Q&A here, shall we? How many situations in the star format should I have prepared for an interview for a senior solution architect role at AWS and how long answer of each should be? I will not recommend you guys to focus on preparing for how many situations star format rather than focusing on that my expectation is 20 different stories you need to have 20 different stories to go into an amazon interview okay the same process for any top tech company you need different story yeah if you have 20 different ones the artist every interviewer is going to ask you at least three questions follow up with an additional three or five probing question even with solution architect or tech a majority of those questions are going to be behavioral based if you don't know how to let's just say migrate from manual or hyper cloud into the AWS server or anything like that, then you won't make it through the SA. The SA is one of the toughest role to hire at Amazon, aside from a senior software engineer, okay? I would say one of the, uh, the toughest one is solution architect, special at level six. Please review my answer for tell me about yourself for SA. All right, awesome, let's do it. I am a C. ISSP professional with over 10 plus years IT experience managing database security, reducing the database attack to 2% and meeting the system's resiliency SLO. It's good. It's very, very good content. Here's what I would have done different. Don't assume that everybody know what CISSP is unless they're in the security space like you. Be very careful with throwing abbreviation. In fact, don't do it at all. I know it sounds very tedious, okay? Because your interviewer, let me explain. This is not just Amazon. This is any employer. You're going to have about two interviewer of the entire interview loop who comes from either your peer or your, or your manager. They know what those abbreviation is, but you're gonna have cross-functional team interviewing you and they may not have a clue what CISP is. I know what it is. I don't think they do. Even the bar raiser, I don't think the bar raiser has any security background to understand because the word, uh, the security job family is so broad you wanted to just narrow it down you do not want fan companies or any company to evaluate you for a generalist you want to be an expert in that category so I would simply say I am a what 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 is your role are you a network engineer database and what is it um, for over a decade do not mention I just it's just me Okay, take it as a grain of salt. I don't like to use the word six years, 10 years, rather than that, just say a decade. A decade just make you sound from here to here. It's just more buttoned up. I have over a decade of experience in um, IT experience, managing database security, reducing database attack to 2% and meeting systems for whom? Who is your customer? Who are you delivering this for? Okay, I would just stop right there. Very simple, very beautiful, just one sentence, two max. Let me give you guys an example. If I were to do, tell me about myself, I'm just totally making this up, guys. Let's just say that I'm interviewing for, let's just say a director for recruiting at Tableau. My tell me about myself would simply just be like, I have, I have over two decades of experience as an executive recruiter and a recruiting leader for companies such as Amazon, Meta, Facebook, Oculus, AR, VR, as well as Google, where I built development center around the world and able to achieve a staffing goal of 120% year over year. But in the most last recent three years, I am a career coach, really feeling the pain of pandemic in helping over 5,000 thousand professional land a job in their top thing companies. Two sentences, okay? It's important for the interviewer to hear your credibility. That's why you're telling me you about yourself should include a little bit about how long have you been doing it? What is your expertise? I mentioned the word recruiting and coaching because that is really the bread and butter of my entire career. So for you guys, professional, think about that. What do you want to be known for? What is your skill and your ultimate strength? Mine is interview coaching. That's what I love doing. I love, I can do it all day long. What is your 
yours because it should come off from your answer. And you always want to end with your ROI, your, your business impact or, or return on investment. You have to mention that because if you don't, you just sound like everybody else because not a lot of people bring the number on the table. So when you do that, you immediately stand out from everybody else. Remember guys, we're still in a, not just pandemic, a recession. So you have to really allow your brain muscles to be as creative as humanly possible with your answer and trimming it to conciseness. Oh, can't talk. Can you give me your insight about account manager role interview? Tell me about the biggest business impact you've made. It's the same thing for intern, for VPs, for directors, for senior managers, for level six, five, four, three, two, one. You see where I'm going? It's the same thing. What changes is your answer, right? If you're interviewing for a junior mid level, obviously your ROI, it's not going to be make impactful in the millions. But if you're interviewing for a level six plus, you better be bringing in at least half a million or 1 million plus generated your largest account. That's an account manager or an account executive, right? Thinking about the account manager, which is very heavy with client management and all of that. The similarity is when you guys are giving your answer, you always, always wanted to be so clear who your customers are. Who are you delivering to? This is where answers all gone wrong because you guys are so anxious, right? Right, who's highly ambitious here? You all are very highly ambitious. That's why you're all here. But when you provide an answer, the biggest mistake is you have to be clear on what problem you're solving, who you're solving for, and how. How did you meet your deliverables? You don't have to be an account manager. You could be an SA, you can be an SDM, you can be a legal person for that matter. What is your deliverable and how did you get there? Amazon is the one company who truly care about that because it is an environment where no one's going to hold your hand. I'm just being very raw here, okay? If you're really interested at Amazon and especially when you make it to a final loop or you're waiting for an offer, you absolutely have to check out my onboarding 30, 60, 90 days. I walk you through three different org and they're so similar where you have to dive really deep and figure out what you are solving for and for whom. Could you break down the logistic of Amazon virtual loop interview next week for learning and develop for L6? Funny that you asked, I actually have a video from two weeks ago go to my main channel, it says on-site loop. It tells you every single thing about the on-site loop and how you should prep. I will have my final round for Amazon Apply Science in two weeks. I'm a new grad. How to answer this? Give me an example where you went above and beyond for your customers. By the way, when you're a new grad, if you don't have any industry experience, you can simply use your academia background. Absolutely. When you use your example, don't talk about your homework, right? Th talk about like your thesis. What did you build? If you are and apply scientists, what did you build in school? Did you write, did you work on projects? Because you have to, even with a bachelor's degree, right? Talk about the project that you put together. Did you leverage your teammate, your peer or classmate? So how did you drive that? So you have to be very, very specific. It doesn't matter if you're entry level, you're an intern, be specific with your academic examples. I cleared two rounds with AWS for AM role. When I was about to give loop last round, the position got filled. The recruiter advised me to wait until new position open. What's your advice? I actually have a video that's called my recruiter goes to me. <laughs> I'm not kidding. If I am the recruiter, rather than having you reapply and sit back and wait for the next position to open, I will simply just route you to the another team to see if there's open position. It is hard for me to believe that Amazon doesn't have any open room because it's Amazon. If you all miss one of my most recent live stream, I talked about the market. Amazon worldwide has over 60,000 job openings, okay? I would follow up with the recruiter. If you have any contact of the hiring manager, I would keep in touch with them as well. Don't bump out. There's gonna be a lot more position for you. Indeed, we are not going in a recession. We are in a recession right now. And this is a great time for you to just pause for a second. I get it, I know. I know that many of you are still affected by the pandemic. A lot of you guys are not but you're so miserable in the job that you are right now, you're ready to just move forward to something bigger and better. I get it, but don't rush guys, don't. I'm only saying that because by the time you wanna work with me, you have already failed your interview, so I don't want that. I want you to work with me before you fail your interview. I've said this in every single live stream, and because my audience is so into working for Amazon, you just wanted to just take the chance and interview for it. So please don't do that. My friend works in Amazon, forwarded my resume to the Amazon hiring manager, and I also apply online as well. It's been three to four weeks with no answer. That's very common, okay? If your friend forward 
your resume to the hiring manager, have your friend follow up with the hiring manager and not you. Before your friend forward your resume, it's good to ask your friend, hey, by the way, I know you're an Amazonian. What do you think about my resume? If you are applying for a certain role or, or that is your background, your brand, it should be all smeared all over your resume. If it isn't, as a hiring manager, I don't have time to just call or have a phone screen just because, okay? How many detail tech I need to have on my star story for chief engineer AWS? Oh, awesome. Well, if you are interviewing for a chief AWS, 30% of those questions are going to be technical. Even though it's AWS, depending on what technical environment do you support, it's AWS. So all of your tech questions should be around infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, specifically experience or data center and networking. All you have to do is your recruiter is supposed to prep you. If they're not before a phone screen, you should leverage your Amazon recruiter and ask this person, what are some of the technical areas you should be focusing on? But 70 to 80% is behavioral question. You're a chief engineer, right? Tell me about the largest product that you are able to build or deliver on the shelf. How will you do that? What is the product? I want to hear about how many users you are able to influence. If you build a product from scratch and bring it to market from zero to market, what is that strategy? What does it generate? If you're a chief, I'm expecting a lot of much stronger ROI from you of your deliverables and your impact to whom. Should the example be relevant to the role or they could be different but still focus on the leadership principle under questions? All of your answer at Amazon or the company that you're interviewing for, it doesn't have to be role specific. Let me explain why. It, it doesn't have to be exact, but it had to be somewhat relevant. Let me explain. For example, one of my best hire was a pizza delivery driver. One of the best recruiting professional I have ever hired was a pizza delivery person. And you're wondering, Holly, what the, what does that have to do with recruiting in Amazon? It has everything to do because the person met the LP 100% of the time for me, which is her attitude, her willingness, her bias for action, the example she was giving me with customer obsession and how hard she worked around the clock for her. I know it's pizza, but this is a junior level position. I was looking for a recruiting coordinator, but that was the best interview I've ever had in my entire career. And that person is still at Amazon after six plus years, and she's now a level six program manager for Amazon. Read the interview questions, do the best that you can. But if you are very clear in your T, which is your task, what problem are you solving for? How are you solving for it? It will be very relevant to an Amazon environment and they will thank you for going to structure your story in that format because that actually saved them time. How long is a waiting period to apply again? Well, that really depends on the feedback. Generally, if a company says you have a year or two years, that's not relevant because I have people who have come to me in my coaching uh, program and they fail six times, re-interview within two months. So I really depending on your networking skill and impressing the hiring managers. I'm in the middle of getting an MBA. I have an interview for L5 PM position at Amazon. Would I likely promote it to L6 after my MBA or should I wait to recruit for an L6 position? Excellent question. Well, just because you have an MBA, it also has to do with how well you communicate. Amazon is a very polished environment, scrappy yet polished, okay? Meaning that your communication skill have to make sense. If you have a amazing written and verbal communication skills, that's a level six, right? Should you wait? Well, it's really up to you. Okay, are you working right now? I mean, do you have to get a job right now? Are you ready? So it's really depending on what you're bringing on the table. Do you have industry experience already? Uh, if you do, it could just be a level six. It's reaching out directly to the hiring manager I interview with overstepping. No, absolutely not. Also, there was someone CC on the email from the recruiting coordinator and I didn't recognize. That's okay. It could just be, you know, another person. You should always keep in touch with the hiring manager and the recruiter. Even if the position is filled or you didn't make it through, they love to see your initiative and your bias for action. Can you talk about the hiring manager interview for senior security technical manager? It's not just for that role specifically, but in general, the 
phone interview with the hiring manager, it's not always the hiring manager. It could be your peers or cross-functional team, okay? They want to know if you meet the foundation at 70% before they invite you for a full loop to not waste your time or there. So you need to be able to demonstrate your technical skills. For all of you who's interviewing for tech role, any of the tech role, you have to demonstrate your tech ability. So I will focus on that and your behavioral questions. If anything, you need to know what is the most complex problem that you have ever solved at the bare minimum for tech roles. I passed the phone screening for both SA and TAM role. That's awesome. I was told that I would only have to do the loop by the SA recruiter and the TAM recruiter saying that I need to separate one. Is it normal? Yes, it is pretty normal. The SA and the TAM has one common denominator, which is networking infrastructure or system infrastructure. That's the part. And what differentiate the two is your account management experience versus the SA. You don't need that uh, heavy account management. So you may have two, because it's two different team, you're not going to have two full loop. A few weeks ago, I interviewed for a manager learning and development transitioning teacher. Interview with hiring manager went really well. He says, I'm a good fit for Amazon, potentially one on his team that hasn't been posted yet. See what I tell you. If they like you, they'll create a role for you. I circle back to the recruiter, any insight when this happens so I don't encounter a freeze. No, this is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Even if you're a better fit or they really like you, they see so much potential, they're going to open a position for you. Okay. Well, I would add this hiring manager on LinkedIn and make sure you stay on top of this hiring manager, not the recruiter, hiring manager. The recruiter will do anything the hiring manager wants as in, hello recruiter, it's time to move forward with Rochelle. Okay. Please help review my story for lead end to end localization project. That's interesting. I lead a pilot project for AWS to be selected as a language service partner, LSP. Awesome. With a budget of 40 mil. I met with requester to understand the scope and quality requirements and current pain points. In order to prepare, I leverage engineering, multimedia, QA, and resourcing team to get the recommendations, best practices, and together with my goals for the project. I will not put the together part in there. It sounded like you reach out to your counterpart and you kind of brainstorm to solve it out. At an Amazon interview environment, they want you to make your decision, your ownership, your suggestion, okay? I would change a lot of that into um, what I have done. I was able to dive deep in figuring out the pain points. Because of that, I put a roadmap together by leveraging the engineering and multimedia QA resource team with this strategy. What is your strategy? I reverse engineer the project schedule and workflow, which I share with internal stakeholder to get their buy-in. It's, it's a little bit too long. It's actually very, very long. So cut to the meat. You have a lot of good stuff in here, but it's getting very, very don't when you guys have your story, especially in your A, don't spend your effort into explaining so much. Okay. Put the needle right into their heart. So focus more in upping up your business impact or your ROI. I love the fact that you mentioned reverse engineering. I would also focus on how did you reverse engineer? Tell me more about that rather than just using that buzzword. I felt like you did a very good job with a lot of the detail, but rather than giving me too much detail, give me just the meat. The action I took is this, because of this, I was able to build a reverse engineering plan. In that plan, I was able to what? That's it. That's how simple it is. Don't overcomplicate things. Just go straight to the needle. I was told two full loops. If I'm forced into two loops, can I repeat the story? No, absolutely not. Because when they debrief, the two team will sit together. Okay. I was wondering what you got into making YouTube video and sharing your experiences and knowledge. Well, honestly, um, I love to coach and I love to mentor and this is not new. I didn't create a YouTube channel just because 2020 hit or just because of anything. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time, guys. When I was working at Amazon, at Google, basically, you know, even 20 years ago, I was a volunteer coach. I've always been a coach. I was a coach for the, it's called the Village, University Village. So I was a coach for student at University of Washington for free. I left my job at Facebook summer of 2019. I actually took a year off to do nothing but creating a YouTube channel. And I just love it. I love it. I fell in love with YouTube. Can you guys tell how much I love YouTube. I did it for fun. Even now it's all for fun. It doesn't matter where I am, what part of the world that I am. I want to always be coaching. 
That's all I want to do. You know, one of the biggest reasons that I left my job at Facebook, it was a fantastic company. They treated me extremely well. Great parts, great pay. The most money I've ever made in my entire career. And what did I do? I threw the hat in because I realized that after over 20 something years of doing the same thing, I've done it already. I've done everything already. I just want to try something that I felt that I wasn't good. I want to try something completely different and I like to push myself to the limit. And this staring at the camera is so unnecessary comfortable. If you look at my content in 2019 to 2020, when I first started, I was awkward and I was sweating. You can see me sweating and I'm like, huh, I really love this. I love it. I love doing things that takes me out of my element. I think that is why I was such a good fit at Amazon and I survived that entire time because I really appreciate and adopting to change in that environment because I saw the result of my work. When I got people in here that said, yes, Amazon, because of you, I got my job at Amazon and I I can't believe it. I took five years off. It is such an amazing feeling. I will do it until I can't speak anymore. I don't know if I'll ever retired of live streaming on YouTube because this is my calling. Many of you guys ask me about salary and you guys can tell that lately I have a lot of the 20 and one split video. A lot of you guys talked about money. You know, guys, listen, I don't focus on money in anything that I do. And look where that got me. It helped me identify what I really love to do. It taught me the different skills that I don't even have. Just because you work at Amazon or, you know, Tesla or, you know, other like fang company doesn't make you a good coach or doesn't make you a great programmer. If you're with the one company for very long, it's about what you built. It's not about who you work for. It's what did you do in those company that makes a big difference. Okay. There's always an answer to your question but it's more important for you to be true for yourself, okay? I get it, I get it, the market is going nuts right now, and sure, you know, a lot of us are underpaid. I was underpaid the entire time I worked. I was grossly underpaid when I worked at Amazon, and I knew that I was okay with that because I joined Amazon very young, and I had the equity, but it's the skill. If I, knowing what I've known now, I would still join Amazon 12 years ago and gone through all of that. Let me tell you guys, I will not trade working for myself and being a career coach for all of you guys who's watching for any amount of money. 